country. Disaster. Mm. I don't I don't think anybody expected this amount of confusion, this amount of using the street parlance, chipante bande, this state of affairs uh, where the government thinks that uh, the problems besetting this country can only be resolved by outsiders. Right. And a situation where you have a government which literally exhibits no capacity to govern. And this starts from the president himself. You know, a government which uh, completely uh, shows no vision as to where this country is going or direction. You know, uh, my hope is that uh, this is going to be a lesson for the Zambian people, that not all that glitters is gold, right. as they say in English. HH marketed himself, you know, as the messiah of this country. And of course, he looked like a messiah against the, the background of what the people saw in terms of PF governance. But they now realize, they now realize that, you know, the man himself was not the type that he, he put a, himself across to be. So I think there are lessons here for everybody, especially the Zambian voters. You know, who can turn around when they listen to this argument and say, oh, but it's you, the politician, that promises heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you, actually you have never been to heaven. You don't even know how heaven looks like. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it's a two-way traffic. It's a two-way traffic. What is, what, is, what is our message as EF? Begin to evaluate each and every politician now ahead of the 20. 60 general elections. Now, President Kabimba, when you say, uh, you know, uh, describing obviously this government as a disaster, uh, there'll be obviously uh, others that will disagree with you based on maybe one or two issues. And these issues that I'm bringing up, uh, clearly this government, when they formed a government, they did get to make mention to say that they took up a government which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was in IC. And I, I continue to refer to this because that's what they said. And yeah. they, they were trying to, you know, uh, uh, put up all these measures to recover the economy then, you know. So they've put up uh, reco the economic uh, recovery plans which they're trying to strive and see if they can get the results they need. No, you did. You are, you are, you, you, are, <coughs> you are just reading half the sentence mm. of what they said. What they said is this, that the economy was bad, mm. that the governance under PF was a disaster, and they're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. So don't read the sentence halfway. They didn't, they didn't just make a confession that the uh, people was now have been brought down. There are only a couple of people around Lusaka. There's one on airport road congratulating him on what God knows. But all those billboards which they had put up saying that he uh, is going to fix this economy out of shame have been brought down because well, there's nobody that he has fixed. I was asking, are they not on that path uh, through maybe the policies that they've made, the time that uh, they've been in power? Of course, it's like they are almost probably two years now. I've, 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 I've listened to that argument from the first week of the UPND government. Mm. You know, in the first week, you used to say, uh, you and others, you know, that, you, that seemed to be the argument, you used to say, no, but they are just one week in government. After two weeks, you said, no, but they are just two weeks in government. After three months, you said, no, but they're just three months in government. Now you are saying, oh, but they're just two years in government. So where do we see this thing ending mm. in terms of uh, the countdown of uh, the period when we expect uh, a success can we, can, can, can we wait for the their year? tenure, which is like five years at least, the five-year five year mandate? Five, year, five, five years of mini-meal at 220 kwacha? Hell, I'm not prepared to wait. And I don't think anybody out there is prepared to wait. President Kavimba, people will disagree with you again. They'll say this is not the first time Zambia is experiencing high prices of minimum. No, it, no, it was no. there in the patriotic front. No, no, no. no. You know, it was there in the uh, perhaps uh, MMD. You know, 
you know, that, 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 that is not an argument mm -hmm. for a government. Okay? If HH had said during his campaign trails, if he had said to the Zambian people, well, uh, you've experienced minimum shortages before mm -hmm. under unique. <coughs> you've experienced the, you know, high prices of minimum under PF. Don't be surprised if the minimum price shoots to 200 when I take over. Nobody would have voted for him. Nobody would have voted for him. So that's not an argument in governance. Mm. An argument in governance is okay, you are a senior, you go to church to become a better person. That's what you do. The priest says to you, the pastor says to you, we accept all the sinners here, all those that have fallen out, fallen out of favor with God, mm. come back and be rehabilitated. That's what the pastor says. But if he, you went to church and the pastor says, well, you know that there will be the sinners in this world. You know that all of you here are sinners. You know that you have no chance of getting into heaven. That church will be empty the following morning. The following weekend. So the point is that uh, but she promised and I wish I could find somebody who, who coined that uh, that name, you know, but she promised. Okay? Uh, but she promised promised that everything that we saw as going bad under PF will be a thing of the past. Violence of cutters will be a thing of the past. Many new prices, you know, that uh, were escalating in, in terms of price were, or would be a thing of the past. It used to go around with a plastic bag of minimum during campaign and waving it to the people. And you buying minimum, you know, in the small packs like this because you can't afford a bag of minimum. And everybody will say, yes. But Bali, Bali will fix it, you know. But she promised, that's what you want to hear. He used to carry, you know, cooking oil in like a plastic. You can't afford a bottle of cooking oil. You know, you can only afford this drop of cooking oil because of Edgar, because of corruption in PF, because of bad governance. Come to me. Those of you that want to have hope in this country, he actually sounded like a, a preacher from the United States. You know the Pentecostal preachers, the way they preach? They move your blood. They move your emotions. And that was Bali during the campaign trail. What does he do now? He's even scared you know, to face the meeting. What is he doing now? He's being selective. Wasting, you know, the time in the state house by going to Unza to play, you know, with the students so that they can so that they can glorify him over minimum allowances. What happens when he Unza closes? They go back to families that are starving. Is that a solution to the problem? Giving the students with allowances, mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. But these students belong to families. They are not workers. They belong to peasant families in the village. They belong to fiber, you know, the parents that are unemployed, that can't afford a bag of minimum. So what happens, you know, when Unza closes? They go back to these families and join the queue of starvation. What 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 is there to go and celebrate? But you go back, you know, you go back to Unza and say, I've come to interact. With the students, it just shows you that the man is confused. He has no idea what he's supposed to be doing. I would, I wouldn't do that myself as a president. And it's not as if he, you know, or he, this is the first time that it is being, it is being done. He got, he had minimum allowances, but you know himself. I was paid a minimum. In fact, I was not even paid a minimum allowance. I used to walk into into the University of Zambia dining hall free of charge. Looked like a hotel during that time. So 
What in God's name has he done? For him really to be celebrating his way to heaven. Nothing. All right. Let, let's, so, let, let's see how hmm. you can defend him before the callers come in. Not really defending, because uh, we're trying to have a, a conversation yes. that is, uh, uh, you know, balanced, uh, with, especially when we're bringing up issues. I mean, they're in public domain, so it's not really defending uh, President Kevin. But we'll talk about, um, you know, the bad things as well as the good things, maybe. that will Tell me the balance. good things. Tell me the good Let, things. Let's, let's talk about the recent, uh, you Tell know, the uh, uh, announcement, the NAPSA that. partial withdrawal. Oh. Isn't that not okay? Because you're seeing a lot of people queuing up, uh, you know, at the National Pension Scheme to get... They are partial withdrawal. That is a twenty percent. Do you know how much? They are, do you know how much they are getting on average? Three mm. p. On average, three p. Okay. Ask, ask, ask. We know all those guys. What mm. they are getting is on average three p. But isn't that not a good pronouncement? I mean, a good pronouncement from no, the no, government. No, 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 no. Mm. You, you, you know, you must be analytical. In the trying to solve some of these problems. Mm -hmm. What the guy has done, and by the guy I mean HH, this guy, as he promised, what he is doing is to defer the misery of these guys. When they finally join, when they finally get to retire, you know, if you know the nature of our social security uh, system, they will get next to nothing. Their monthly, their monthly payments will be something like five kwacha. Okay? That's what, he, that's what he's doing. He's consigning people to more and more problems in later life when they don't even have the energy to work. Okay? So, it's okay to be populist. Partial withdrawal, you know, partial withdrawal. What is 20% of a driver's uh, 40 years of, of uh, remittances, for example, mm. social security remittances? It's next to nothing. What is 20% of a gardener's 40 years or 20 years of employment? It's next to nothing. So what, what you are doing, you are exciting this person to death because see, 20 years down the road, but she promised won't be there. When this guy is starving to death, he won't be there. Is this something that you'd want to change if you formed government yes. in 2016? Yes. I mean in 2026. Though. Yes, there's no need. In fact, in fact, I believe that we need to improve our social security uh, system. How? I was telling, I was telling, mm. you know, a colleague of mine two years ago. I got a, a friend of mine who was my teacher way back at Kafir Secondary School in the seventies. Mm. When he went back to Canada, he got a job in Malawi. He was posted under the United Church of Canada. He is now retired. He is now retired. Okay. When I was talking to him on the phone, he says he's, he's living on his, on his retirement package. He's also got a job as a guard. You know, Muzungari Benson. Mm. In fact, he said to me, you know, after this uh, telephone call, winter, I'm going, you know, to... He's, he's, he's doing two things now. He's teaching, you know, Chinese children's immigrants, English. And also, he's doing a job as a guard. But he's able to live off his retirement package. He's, he's still able to take his wife on vacation. He's bought a property in on Vancouver Island. And the man, when I see him on a video call, he still looks the same the way he looked in in, in, in 1978. In 19, oh, oh, well, he was here in the latest in 2014 when he came to visit me. He still looks you know the same so but look 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 at our people when they retire immediately they retire the complexion changes they start looking gray because they, because what they get is a pittance nothing next to nothing sometimes when they die you know relatives fight mm -hmm. 
Eh, when you know, when they go and you know to to to, to, and get, you know, to nap, so to go and get, you know, now the family is shocked. The family is only fifteen thousand kwacha, which can't go around, you know, the extended family. Mm. So I take the view, you know, that we need a great deal of improvement uh, of our social security system so that it can look after people when they have left employment. The system as it is now, it doesn't. Okay. Let me also give you another dimension. Mm. Okay. The social security scheme is supposed to engender benefits to those that save. What do I mean by this? If you look at the houses in New Kamara, New Kawata, Chilenje South, you know, I don't know if you know this, that those houses were built out of a grant by the local authority social superannuation fund given to Lusaka City Council as a, as a, as a, as a loan, sorry, not a grant, as a loan, mm. at very minimal interest rate. So, those that were remitting money to LASIF were able to occupy those houses in the Livaras. And you know how much rent they were paying? 15 kwacha per month. So at least you have a social security scheme that is giving, giving you ultimately a decent living, mm. even in terms of shelter. If you are paying 15 kwacha per month, even, even if you are not working, at least you have shelter, which under the UN now is a human right. Mm. Today, you retire, you can't even afford a two-room house in Kalingalinga. Okanyama. So, so what social security? What security is that? It's a misnomer, total misnomer of the way. Social security, okay? It must be social suffering. So we have to understand, the, you know, oh, this system well instead of just, you know, arguing. You know, but HH has no idea about all these things. No idea. President coming by you and I uh, like to the facts. I, I'm glad that you've taken us back to where you know family members would argue over maybe the benefits of uh, a disease yeah. uh, because then even the process of uh, you know uh, getting this money was uh, a, a bit complex. I think a lot of families would uh, you know uh, you know agree and say we, they would agree with my sentiments that getting this money from NAPSA after maybe a, 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 you know a relative uh, pass uh, you know dies it was an issue some of them haven't even claimed this money so this 20 percent which can be done even online brings a bit of excitement to people it might be it might be minimal but of course people are excited because they're able to eat that which they were benefit i mean they were contributing well if if you ignore the principle of providence mm. yes if you ignore the principle of providence yes you have every right to be excited but if you take into account that the you may live into the 60s mm. and 70s, then you must be circumspect about uh, that excitement. It's just 20% that you're getting. You're not getting the whole money, President. That's, that's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making, that uh, you are excited today, but what you are going to get, uh, you know, the life you are going to live thereafter is a life of misery. That's exactly the point that I'm making. Mm -hmm. So you have a choice to be excited today and uh, get your money, use that money for a month, and you tell your relatives, whoa, at least Natenga Dharma Zanga, there's nothing that you're going to fight over. And if God gives you longer life, then that period will be a period of misery. So what really should be your choice mm -hmm. in terms of providence? It's better that you live a better life than now at the time when you do not have the energy, at the time when you don't have a meaningful income. That, that, that is what I would be encouraging my people if I were president. All right. So I, I know that uh, we have people that are listening to us this morning, President Karimba, and they are on those queues there. 
What will be your words, Daryl, today? Well, should they go back home and not, uh, you know, claim for that uh, 20%? The, you know, their frenzy has already been whipped up. Mm. You know, by, in fact, when you listen, Eugene, I don't know if you have had the, you know, uh, an opportunity to interview some of the people there, uh, you know, that are queuing up. It, it is, it is, it is a, uh, a miserable story. There are people that spend two days on the queue only to be told, sorry, you don't qualify. There are people, you know, that spend three days on the queue and when they get there, they have a wrong social security number. So, so, so uh, there, there, there are stories and stories there. And I would have thought that uh, you colleagues in the media, instead, instead of just uh, concentrating on the partial uh, uh, withdrawal, withdraw, mm. you know, and the, and the friends that goes with it, would have taken time, you know, to go and get the real stories from those guys that uh, are spending days, mornings in the cold, days in the cold as it, as it is becoming chilly now, to get the real stories. Because, we, you, you know, we have to complete this circle. Mm. You can't just get, uh, you know, uh, HH's story. You can't just get his side. Go and get the side of the people that are actually in the fray of this thing. But you see, the media is very timid. You know, you just want to say, oh no, but uh, uh, partial withdrawal, oh, partial withdrawal, you know. Go and find out, you know, what, you know, partial withdrawal means in reality. Go and find out, sir, you know, you got your, you know, your withdrawal. How much did you get? Find out, you know, how, whether or not that really changes the life of the person. Mm. I've, I've, I have a problem with the, with the, you guys in the media in this country. Because okay. you are not proactive. This is a story that you are running by just listening to one man. Partial withdrawal. Twenty percent. And you end there. No, but we bring in, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, officials from uh, NAPSA to come and explain further as well. Which no, 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 no. Speak to the beneficiaries, so-called the beneficiaries. Don't speak to NAPSA management. Speak to my uncle, who was a driver. Okay? Mm. And this is the problem that we have. You know, that, you know, the only one people that can come here to come and speak English. No. Bring a guy, you know, that is coming to engage in a discourse with you in Nyanja. Right. That's a problem that I have with this nonsense of English being the official language. Listen how intelligently they are going to argue to you and how they are going to, to tell you how the whole of this thing is beneficial to them mm. or not. Mm. Okay? But you can't be selective. You have to complete the, you know, the circle. Like I said, you have to start with the but is the, you know, 20% oh, pronouncement, yeah. pronouncement mm -hmm. get to NAPSA, how they are administering it or managing it, get to the so-called beneficiaries, what, what is the experience of this? Is it changing their life? Complete, complete the story. Complete the story. You can't be selective, you know, in the, in this story. You want you want one man to remain, you know, to to remain a hero or be looked at a, uh, as a hero when he's actually a villain, when he's just causing misery to people. I don't think that's the right way of constructing society. My view is that there is a story here to tell. Okay, mm. there is a story here to tell. I've interviewed people myself that have been involved as a friend of mine who went and spent two hours on the on the queue and they gave up he said I, I just can't okay and if this continues it's going to breed corruption even within NAPSA because then it will mean you can only get your your payment depending on whom you know that's the consequence. That will be the consequence of that. So all that I'm saying to the media is complete the story. Right. Okay? Bali 
is just being populistic. That he got his naps are 20% and he goes and he paints, you know, the uh, Tiende Pamozi Block 5. And, and, and he really, <coughs> he thinks that as president, he has brought, you know, the moon on earth. And what is wrong with this country, really? What is wrong with this country? And the tabloids are screaming, you know, headlines, you know, he, he has helped you. You know this. Do you know how? Do you know how much the missionaries did for this country? How many schools they built? Mm. What is painting a kama block at Unza? That you must be running to heaven to go and report to God that I've painted TP5. What nonsense is that? Why are we being so simplistic about life? Why? Why? Why do we ignore the broader perspectives of a situation? So I argue mm. myself, Eugene, I submit, mm -hmm. you know, that this partial withdrawal, and I hope I live long enough to see it, its consequences, which I think I will, because I know I'm right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I, I hope Bali lives long, even after he's defeated in 2026, so that he can see the after effects of this nonsense. I was asking, so your word is basically the people that are queuing up right now. It's a waste of time. They should go back home. And, uh, no, 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 no. That's they shouldn't not, get the money. No, no, no. That's not the point that I'm making. Mm. You know, the point I'm making is this, that they must be cautious. They must know that uh, the future for them mm -hmm. is bleak. That's, that, the, that's, that, that's, that's a submission I'm making. Right. Okay. That if, if I'm given a choice, if I'm given a choice not to take my partial withdrawal now and see an improved social security scheme that is going to look after me in my 70s and 80s, I would choose the latter. That's the point I'm making. So maybe if um, this uh, percent was increased, or it, it would have made sense. Can we go with that discussion as well? 20% is quite small. Maybe it if it was to 50 or maybe above that. It even makes things worse. Right. It even makes things worse. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because then it means then it means you are you you are you are eating into uh, your life's saving. Okay? At the age of 40 for example. And the the remaining 20, 30 years mm -hmm. will be years of dire starvation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so you, you know, you know, it is a duty of government, uh, Eugene, to guide its people. I don't think it is right for the government to mislead people. The duty of government is to guide its people into a better life. That's not what UPND is doing now. It is not guiding people into a better life. President, we have a society that uh, you know people have gotten loans with uh, various uh, you know institutions. Yes. Uh, in this case, some of them have uh, defaulted, and yes. uh, here comes the money that you worked for, and you're getting twenty percent of it uh, with no interest. You're not going to pay anybody at the end of the day. That's your money. Which one is a better one? Encouraging people to go for loans or to invest or maybe to get the NAPSA partially withdrawn? No, no, no. You, are, you, 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 you know, you are turning the argument on its head. No, no, I want us to understand something. The, because the, this the, is what the, is happening. It's the reality as well. No, the point, the, mm. point, the point is this. What, is a social, what, what are the objectives of a social security scheme? Mm. I think that's fundamentally is the question. Okay. okay. The objective is this. It is... For you to fall back on uh, your remittances at the time when A, you have no job, B, you have no energy to work, mm -hmm. C, you are in the uh, uh, twilight of your life. That is the, the objective of uh, a social security scheme. In short, it's a reserve. Yes, it's a reserve. Mm -hmm. I come to you and say, Eugene, can you keep this money for me? Okay. 30 years down the road, 
when I'm out of employment, please let me have this money back. Okay? And, 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 and do you know that your remittances don't attract interest? So there's no interest that your monthly remittance attracts. So you put 20p in, you get 20p at the end of the day. You don't get 22p. It doesn't attract interest. So, so that is what I come to say to you. Please, when uh, my years are declining, can I fall back on this money so that it can look after me? That, that, that's the objective of it is not for me to get it when I still have the energy to work. That's a contradiction of a social security scheme. Mm. That's, 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 that's the underlying contradiction in this partial withdrawal. Okay? Mm. The idea is that you get the money when you are not able to earn an income. What is happening now is that People are earning an income, they are still employed as drivers, mm. then they go and withdraw. Okay? Yeah. That's a contradiction of a social security scheme. Social security scheme is intended to look after you when you are in the afternoon or the evenings of your life. And there is a purpose for that. Because A, you know, may not have a family, you know, to... To, to look after you, B, you, you have no energy, C, you know, you do not have a job, you know, etc., etc. But you have to eat, you have to survive as a human being. So, when you said to me, come and withdraw 20% now, then I put it in my pocket. I'm still practicing law. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a contradiction? That's why it's called the social security. It's not, it's not security for me if you give me the money now. Mm. What security is it? I can still earn an income. You know? So beneficiaries of this are being invited, I mean, um, uh, advised to invest it and not just uh, maybe... What, what can you invest <laughs> Not for in? consumption. What, what, what? So, so is, isn't that not good also for you know, our you know, economy? You know, when you listen to HH, it's very annoying, to be honest with you. I'm glad you have said, in, you know, at the beginning of this program that the views expressed here are not yours. And they shouldn't be yours. No, they are not. They are mine. Yes. Yeah. It's very annoying when you listen to him. It's a very, very annoying fail. Firstly, you can't invest 3P in anything today. Okay? Do you remember one of the statements he made three, three four days ago? I was just talking to, you know, to Jamie after she read the news. You know? Don't spend time, you know, on the, on social media, you young people. Go and get, uh, go and buy a center pivot from Saro. He's marketing Saro. As if the center pivots there are free. Or they are one P. Go and find out from anybody who is getting this partial uh, withdrawal, if they can afford the, a center pivot at Saro. You know? Very annoying chap. Next statements, you know, which are terribly unreasonable and misleading. You know? And, and, and the people are laughing. He goes to Unza, the whole president. You know what he says to Unza, to Unza students? You, you know, female students, stop going after sugar daddies. Is that his job? The entity president is the father of the nation. What the father? He's your father, not mine. What father? His job is, 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 is to start telling people who goes out with who. That's what he can drive from State House to Unza for. Come on. The president is serious. The president gets to, you know, update the nation on morals and uh, all that. So if he talks about that, basically he's deriving... Who checks, who checks his morals? Who checks his morals? What right does he have to talk about uh, my morals? I don't check his morals. Okay. So this, 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 this cultural thing of father of the nation, HH is younger than me. How can he be my father? He's way, way far younger than me. When I was leaving the university, HH was not there. How can he turn around to be my father? 
Oh, well, we're meant to believe that uh, the president is the father of the nation. So, from that. And who is the mother? Because the first to have a father, there must be a mother. The first lady, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll open up the phone lines in a bit. Uh, for you to, this to get to and uh, share your thoughts. <laughs> Uh, my guest is, of course, uh, Economic <laughs> Front President uh, Win Takabi. Uh, my guest one. this morning on uh, live issues. The number you'll be able to get us through for your um, uh, contributions is 0977 624270. That is 0977 624270. Send in your advanced uh, questions on WhatsApp as well so that we can, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, alternate as we start picking up the calls at exactly 10. Now, um, President Kevin, but let's move to something else also. So, yes. um, I know there's been uh, a huge debate around. Uh, Zambia's uh, debt restructuring. The debate that has been there is that, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're critics of the government, and uh, I, I don't know if you fall in that as well. That feels, uh, you know, uh, the current government is not where, doing Where the debt. critics are there, shall I be found? Mm, okay, so uh, I take it you're there as well. Uh, yes. With the way the debt restructuring program is going, it's uh, bound to backfire because uh, uh, some critics feel China has been left out who are, you know, who we owe a lot actually. As a nation, it's, you not, take that. it's not even about China alone. It's not even about China alone. It's the whole principle of, uh, you know, what this debt restructuring is all about. Mm. Okay, it's the whole principle of uh, of uh, the role of the IMF in the. Uh, in uh, uh, helping third world countries manage their debt trap mm. because you know virtually all third world countries are in this nicely constructed debt trap okay which is very difficult for them to uh, disentangle themselves from and this is not an accident. This is a deliberately constructed project by the West. That's why you see America today panicking when China, Russia, and the BRICS countries are trying to find an alternative uh, system of, of, of international trade. Mm. Okay? This is a deliberate you know, system. Why, why is it that why is it that uh, when at the end of the, of the Second World War if you read the history of war, the United States had lent European countries a total of 12 billion US dollars that time. Lent for them to reconstruct their countries. Mm. And then in 1948, they come and establish the IMF and the World Bank to help those countries reconstruct their country. You, you know, they are, they are, they, they are, you know, uh, economies, you know, and, and infrastructure. Why, why is it that they're not indebted? You know, why, why is it that they are not in this debt that African countries are in? It is because the nation state left by so-called colonial masters and mistresses was designed in such a way that we shall perpetually be in debt to the Western countries as producers and suppliers of raw material. Okay? Hmm. Now, I'll come back to your question. If you remember when UPND took over government, there were pronouncements from HH, from Stumbego Musokotani as Minister of Finance, from Chipoka Molenga as the Minister of Commerce, that we are going to do to see value addition to copper. That never again shall we export copper in its raw form. We are going to see some value addition. Two years down the road now, has anybody shown you a copper road of value addition? 
Has anybody come back to you and said, this is, you know, the value addition you are doing to our copper? Nothing. Copper continues to be exported out of this country in its raw form. Okay? So you ought to understand the history of this debt trap before you jump, you know, to debt restructuring. You can't restructure what you don't understand in, it, in terms of its genesis. This is a debt trap and it will be difficult for Zambia and any third world country to disentangle themselves from this debt trap. Yesterday on another program, I was giving an example of Argentina. Mm. Argentina is the third largest economy in Latin America. Its population is three or four times of Zambia's population. Argentina is the third largest economy in Latin America. It has received a disbursement of something like 52 billion from the IMF. The largest amount of disbursement since the IMF was established in 1948. Go to Argentina today. There are riots on the street. Okay? Commodity prices are unaffordable. There is unemployment is escalating. There is, there is a, 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 a unemployment, price of, of, of commodities, inflation, everything, everything, everything that was, that the 52 billion US dollars was intended, you know, to, to, to resolve is just flying through the roof. 52 billion US dollars. And I think from that 52 billion, they have, they, they, they've been given 48 billion of that. It has not solved the problem. You are, you are celebrating here an amount of 1.3 billion. 1.3 billion. So, the issue of debt restructuring, which they started, immediately they came into power, they said it shall be Resolved in the next three months, it shall be resolved in the next two months. Then that lady, uh, Margareta, came, the IMF managing director, who is just an employee of the IMF. And the church gives us the impression she owns the IMF and therefore the problems will be resolved. She's just an employee from Bulgaria. Okay? But somehow, you know, you have a Photoshop and status, and the, you guys in the media, you, you, you show us the, you know, the photos, and you give the impression, oh, now, I think he, before, before she heads out, I, you know, from the airport, he, he, she has left money with HH and Mr. Musokotan. So our problems are over. What did Musokotan say in, the, was it January this year, if I'm not mistaken? He said the debt restructuring will be over, will be able to conclude by the middle of March. Okay? In the first quarter, by the middle of March. What is it today? May. He has run out of ideas. Okay? So, this is a, a complex historical issue. And the only leaders that understand the, its construction will be able to get their countries out. Not if you think that the, the solutions lie in Washington. You know, you go to Washington, you know, get a photo with the Margareta, you know, an employee of the IMF, you know, and, the, and all these praise singers in the UPND, HH with the IMF, you know, the man comes back empty handed. You know, Stumbeko goes there, you know, hey, Stumbeko is in him. The man comes back empty-handed, you know. Now what has happened is that the stories have come to an end. Hmm. Okay? No debt restructuring. Yes, the Chinese have a role to play. Hmm. And, the, and they are not wrong. 
if I were, if I were China, you owe me money, and you are as arrogant as HH is. This uncle, this is a quote. Is that the arrogance? Yeah. Your arrogance is going to restructure your economy. I'll sit back. So they try to invite the Chinese to a round table. The Chinese were kind of company now, after my season now, then we are going to come back. Because China is a serious country. Last week we were told that, um, you know, the relationship between China and Zambia is still okay. There's a cordial relationship there. Which At the right time. Which diplomat will say that they will be normal? Or the relationship is not good. Diplomats speak very silently. So I found a chunk of one of my politicians. Okay? Diplomats speak very silently. There's no, there's no diplomat, you know, that he, You heard the HH saying that he was on a 45 minute telephone call with President Xi Jinping. Mm. Yes. He didn't tell us what they discussed, he just told us the period of the call. For five minutes, you know. What came out of that uh, telephone call? We haven't seen anything. So they have left you. If you think that uh, your solution lies with the West, good luck. Be our guest. And so far, we haven't seen that uh, happen. And I can tell you that. Uh, it will not happen. I saw I saw a statement from uh, the IMF or uh, uh, the MD. I think yesterday or the other day, saying that the IMF will be will be will soon be giving Zambia the 1.3 billion US dollars. You know, is this the first time she's saying it? She has been saying it uh, since. You know, Janet Yellen, you know, the Treasury Secretary, Minister of Finance, was here. What happened? Kamala Harris came to look for the house where the grandfather lived, in, you know, um, 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 in the pre-independence days, you know. Left. Many people, if you ask people here, your neighbors in Chipata compound, at the vice president of America, they don't even know. And they don't even care. And the UPN, out of ignorance, they made it a big thing. Like, this is the first time, you know. They, they forget that he... Uh, you know, the vice president of America, you know, or Humphrey, was here in 1968 during Kaunda's time, four years after independence. But they were giving the impression that this is the first time that an American vice president is visiting Zambia. So, so the, the, there is all this about my country, you know, where uh, you, you can't understand. So, in short, you're saying that the trajectory where the European is moving with debt restructuring. And just the economy, it's, 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 it's not heading anywhere. Even if we give them up to 2026, basically, we will not heal. Even if you give them up to 2040. Mm. Even if you give them um, you know, up to 2040. If it is HH, Stumbeko, you know, and Arumango, um, you know, and everybody else. Even if you give them up to 2040. If today, if today, the... the the president is, you know, has to go so low and start discussing the availability of minimum in Northwestern province. With the minister, you know, is very proud, you know, that you see the president used to sleep in my house, you know, during the time of the opposition. So what? You know? President Gabimbalo.